Hey everyone, what's up? It's Austin. Welcome back to my channel. This week's video is going to be about my Anki statistics and my Euro statistics. So if you're a numbers person, stick around and stay tuned because you're going to like this stuff. I've been asked a lot after I took USMLE Step 1 to talk a little bit more about my UWorld stats and how I was using Anki. So in this video, I'm going to break down both of those things. If you're interested in learning more about my medical school journey and following me along, joining me for the vlogs and seeing how I'm going through medical school as an M3 now and also to hear about valuable advice, tips and strategies that I have to offer along the way, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I make helpful videos for all people no matter where you are on your medical journey, whether you're in high school, pre-med or already in medical school. I hope my content can help you succeed and you know make this journey a little bit easier for yourself. Now in terms of UWorld, let's start with that. I wasn't some kind of savant, I wasn't getting these 90 plus scores all the time on UWorld. I had exams where I've gotten as high as 100% and several exams over 90%, but I didn't end UWorld like anywhere near 90%. I ended at an 81%. I'll show you my statistics after this. But I started UWorld around 70% and worked my way up to 81%. So it wasn't like I was getting all these questions right right away you know i did use anki so i think i was a little bit ahead of the average all the time when i started u world but that was because i was keeping up with anki the whole time i did one pass of u world and i did some of my incorrect but not all of them this is why the total correct and total incorrect count is a little bit off it's obviously not equaling to the total number of used questions that i've done so I started around 70% on UWorld and I got a lot higher scores towards the end, which gave me an average after first pass of 81%. Um, this was 100% used when I took step one about a month ago, but you can see they're constantly updating UWorld and adding new questions. So I guess there's 34 unused questions now and that totals to 1%, but I did finish UWorld, I promise. <laughs> so. This is the bell curve here in UWorld showing you know, the median score and where I was scoring in terms of 81%. I don't think that these are very predictive just because you're in one area or another doesn't mean you're going to get a certain score in step one. Remember that UWorld is a learning resource so you should use it to learn content better and don't fixate too much on percentages Just try to do the best you can. So every block you do on UWorld you want to make sure that you're doing it on timed conditions just like you're doing it on the real exam in no tutor mode. Tutor mode kind of promotes instant gratification. You get to see the right answer right away and read the description. That's not a real testing environment. You don't want to build that false sense of confidence where you start knowing you're getting a string of questions correct and you feel better about yourself. You should be taking timed 40 question blocks using everything. When you learn everything, of course, use everything and you should be doing 40 question blocks under time conditions just like test day. Test day is seven blocks, very similar to UWorld blocks. So every single block you do on UWorld you should just feel like you're doing a block that would be on your real exam. So that's going to help you get used to the timing and get used to what the exam will be like on test day. So as you can see, I still have about 169 incorrects left. I just never finished it before my exam. I didn't see any reason to you know, grind extra hard to finish these 169 incorrects. I just felt like I got better you know, yield out of my time doing some other things before my exam, looking over some Anki cards, doing the first aid rapid review, and then ultimately just relaxing and resting the last few days from my exam. I didn't want to do any more questions, so that's why those residual questions are still there. And so let's go on performance and take a look at how the UR performance was. So overall, this is the same thing you saw on the welcome page. So for reports, you can see the different sections. So we'll go from my worst section, histology and embryology. Histology I was especially bad at in the 43rd percentile, 59%. I was never very good at histology. I always considered it to be something pretty low yield, so I never spent a lot of time learning it, and you know, that just goes to show. And here everything else. You can sort of see the percentiles change and how I performed. I did very well in biostats, biochem, behavioral science, and pharmacology. I mean, I don't think there was anything I did specifically. I guess I did pretty decent on anatomy and genetics. I don't know what's like considered good or bad, but those are the breakdowns I had in UWorld. 
terms of systems. Let's see what's the worst. Oh no, ENT. Uh, to be fair, I don't think medical school curriculums and outside resources really do a great job of going over specialties like ENT, so I felt like I didn't know that much, and as you can see, I didn't perform as high in that section. Pharmacology, general principles, cardio, opto, renal. Everything else seems okay, mostly over 80%. Let's see what I was doing the best at. Microbio, shout out to Sketchy. Biochem again, I guess I've always been someone, you know, I like those pathways and stuff. They've always clicked in my brain, so it was nice to have those. Luckily, my ethics started going up to 87%. This was a section I kind of struggled with early on. I don't know why, I was always between two and choosing the wrong one. But everything else looks pretty decent. Nice, ortho, 83%, not bad, not bad. Neuro, Emonk, okay. And then topics, I think these are just individual topics, so it's probably not gonna give us as much information, yeah. Oh well, so some of these ones I just never got a question right on. All right, well, step one's over. I'm very happy with my score and I hit the goal I wanted, so I'm not complaining. Uh, let's take a quick look at my graphs and see what's going on here. So you can see that the blue is my cumulative score average and the green is what I was scoring on those dates. So we'll just go for all time for now. I guess it's already on there. You can see my first couple exams were pretty rough. They were a lot around 60% and you can see towards the end I was really scoring much higher consistently above 80% towards the end of my dedicated period. Let's take a look at the last 90 days. Okay, you can start to see most of the scores were above average, which is the blue line here. We'll go to the last 30 days. Okay, so I haven't done much work since my exam on the 23rd, so that's why you don't see much, but you can see I was closing out the last 30 days above my average, which was getting close to 80%. So it might be easier to see performance by test. Okay, wow, so these are all the tests I've ever taken. So you can see I've actually never scored lower than 60%. That was my lowest, and I hit 60 quite a few times early on. But towards the end, I was, you know, well above, you know, this line is the average that other Euro test takers were at, and I was consistently, you know, above 80%. You can see 95% here. The average was 52%, and my average was 80%. So I was doing quite well towards the end. Let's go and take a look at last 30 days. Okay, this gives you a little bit more representation of the data. So this line, again, is the average of other test takers. And you can see my scores on the top. So between 80 and 100% mostly. Yeah, so overall that was uh, the Euro portion. And uh, let's jump over to Anki now and take a look at the statistics on there. So on the other hand, Anki, I know I have, you'll, what you'll see is a 561 day streak when I was studying for step one for 18 months or so, which seems really impressive. And you know, it was kind of impressive, but there's a huge disclaimer, a ton of asterisks on that 561 day streak because I added it up and I took about 35 days off, mostly in the summer between M1 and M2, and then scattered throughout the year when things came up and stuff. But for me, I'm very type A, very systematic, I'm a numbers guy, so I still did like two flashcards or five flashcards whenever I knew I was gonna postpone or take a day off. So the streak is kinda like, eh, I just kinda wanna maintain the streak, but it probably would've been broken, like I said, 35 different times. So, you know, that's a disclaimer, straight up, I'm being honest with all of you guys. Um, but if you're interested on how to postpone or take days off of Anki, I did make a video about that because sometimes you need a day off. It's hard to do Anki every single day. For the most part, you do want to do it every day, but check out my video on how to take days off of Anki. I think it will be helpful to all of you. Remember at the end of the day, these statistics are not predictive or you know anything like that. Just because you get a certain percentage on UWorld doesn't mean you get a certain score on step one. And just because you have a certain percentage correct or a certain number of Anki stats doesn't make you smarter than anyone else. It's just another metric you can use and it's, I hope that it can be helpful to you to see you know, my statistics and you can compare it to your own and ask me any questions at all in the comments. Again, my videos are here once a week to help all of you. If you find it helpful, give it a like, let me know in the comments and give me some ideas for you know, videos I can do in the future. So thanks again for supporting the channel and now let's jump in over to the computer. All right, everyone, welcome to my Anki. This would have given me a mini heart attack if I saw this a couple weeks ago, but looks like 5,480 cards or so are due. You can see I haven't touched Anki since my exam was on the February 23rd here. Yeah, I just haven't done any Anki, just haven't had a need to, and definitely zero desire to do Anki, so I'm not really sure 
what I'm going to do with all these decks, probably just delete them and move on and figure out how I'm going to use Anki for step two and shelf exams and all that. But here are my Anki stats, the longest streak, like I did mention earlier, 561 days. But huge disclaimer, like I said, around 35 or so days I was postponing and skipping out on Anki. But my daily average was around 510. So you can take a look at my heat map at this nice full year in 2020. But you can see all these light days here, like those 22 cards, 7, 7. This was a whole weekend. I think that was, yeah, July 4th. So I was up in Michigan with some friends. And then just random days. You know, I give, my, I give myself some credit. I mean, I didn't completely not do Anki. I would at least, like, rip 20 to 40 cards on, like, some kind of transit or commute or something before I was like, all right, there's no way I'm doing Anki today. I'm just going to postpone. All right, so here we are with my Anking stats. Uh, nothing the past day, nothing the past week. Haven't been doing Anki, obviously. But all time, pretty good numbers, I would say. 99% for the young cards, 95.2% for mature, and a true retention of 97%. Uh, disclaimer again, just to be transparent and honest with all of you, I think this is slightly inflated because towards the last few months of my studying, I was using the rescheduler add-on a lot instead of pressing again, and that was because I felt like that gave me more flexibility of my studying, and instead of pressing again, I was able to reschedule the card in like 10 days or 15 days because I knew the card like 50% well, not like fully forgotten it, so I didn't want to press again and see it like all these times during the week and add to my already growing review account with question banks and all that so I would reschedule cards and if you don't know what I'm talking about I will link my rescheduler add-on video in the description and up in the top right corner there so definitely check that out I think it's a great add-on really helps you take control over your learning and gives you more flexibility on rescheduling your cards and using Anki better so just in the on King deck this is forecast difficulty forecast look at the review count 96% of days I use this deck out of the 578 days, I used 558 days of using the On King deck. And look at review time, wow. 958 hours. I know it sounds daunting, it sounds like a lot, but remember this is over 1.5 years. And it looks like if I studied every day, it would just be about 90 minutes a day, which is what I would say I spent, you know, on my Anki. It says average for my day studied was about an hour and 43 minutes. I would say that's about right. Some days more, some days less. That's why it's an average. And average answer time was about 13.4 seconds or 4.48 cards every minute. This is not important. Interval hourly breakdown. You can see in the hourly breakdown, I did most of my reviews in the morning. I tried to do my reviews first thing just to get them out of the way, to be honest. Answer buttons. Okay, so when I was first learning a card, about 84%. Uh, it's not bad. I think a lot of times I did the cards right after watching Boards and Beyond or Pathoma or Sketchy. So most of the content was still pretty fresh. And then once I was able to get the cards to the young and mature phase, you can see that my percent correct was a lot higher. And here you can see most of the time I was using that option three, which is the good option and sometimes using the again. You can see I very sparsely use the option easy. I talk about and warn against using easy too much in my video about Anki settings, but easy expands the interval of the card, so you don't want to do it too much just because you can space the card out so far in the interval that you're not seeing it regularly and you may start forgetting it. So good is always the sweet spot option that you want to look at. And yeah, these are the cards that you know I did. 91% of Anking. The other 2,000 cards were like step two or like repeat duplicates and just cards that you weren't supposed to do. So that's the reason why it's not like 100%. So yeah, that's the On King deck. Uh, let's go ahead and do collection just to see how many hours we have studied. If we look at everything as a whole, it might take a little while to generate, but oh wow, here we go. So scoring wise, pretty similar in terms of retention. Let's still look at that review time. 1,065, yeah, wow. Over a thousand hours of Anki. Yep, so those are my Anki stats and my U World stats. So I hope that can be helpful to all of you. So there you have it, everyone. A short little video just highlighting my Anki stats and my U World statistics. I haven't been using Anki, as you've seen, for very long anymore after step one. I kind of just abandoned it. I think I'll pick it up again when M3 starts to get going and I'll have to use it for different clerkships and stuff. I'm honestly still trying to figure out what's the best system for you know M3 years. So I'm watching other YouTubers too. I'm reading Reddit threads and hopefully I come up with a good system that's a good blend of all those things. And when I'm done with each rotation, I'll be presenting it to all of you. So if anyone's you know coming up into medicine 
um, that's not quite where I am yet. I hope that can be a good example for all of you. So at the end of the day, that's what my channel is all about. So thank you for watching. Thanks for tuning in and supporting the channel. I appreciate all of you a lot. Have a wonderful week and I'll catch you back next time.